Love Healing Hearts, Pat Love here, to talk about what are you doing to make people want to come to church, or what are you doing to drive them away? Now, the reason I ask that is because I've heard stories of people going to church, like with a muscle shirt and tattoos and maybe a couple of earrings hanging from their ear, bald head with some raggedy jeans, and they come in straight from the street, really looking for God, looking for real love, looking for something that makes sense out of their lives, out of themselves, because they're finally at the end of themselves. They're at the end of their rope, and they know they need help. And some dingbat in the church, some prude knucklehead comes up to them and tells them, oh, you can't come in looking like that. Who the heck made you the dress police? I don't care if a prostitute walks in with her skirt up to her, to her navel. You offer to help her keep warm if you feel more comfortable putting a choir robe on or whatever. But don't make her feel dirty. Don't make her feel like, oh, how dare you walk in looking like that. Ah. Whosoever will let them come. Don't get in the way. Don't block them. You could be blocking somebody's soul from eternal bliss and damning them to hell because of your narrow-minded, judgmental attitude. How dare you? You have no idea what led that woman into prostitution or what forced her into it. You have no idea what caused that man to live the life he lived. You have no idea what they went through. You don't know the pain. Listen, one time I was in prison ministry and this woman was sitting near the front. There was like this whole group had come in um, and they sat down and she was sitting there all buff like a man looking tough like you'd and bored and smug like whatever. Let's see what you guys got to say today. I mean, she looked cold and hard. Now, to judge from the outward appearance, which we do as humans, my first impression would have been, huh, she's not going to get anything out of this today. She doesn't even want to be here. But I minded my own business and did what I was there to do. And while I was doing what I was there to do, the Lord spoke to me and highlighted her to me. And God's heart reached out to her heart because God was aware of all the pain she had been through that led her to that point in her life. And God told me specifically to tell her how much he loved her. She wasn't saved. She was still wearing the filth and the stench of her sinful life with pride, mind you. But underneath was a hurting little girl that only God could see. And as I shared with that woman what God told me to tell her, her whole position changed. She unfolded her arms, uncrossed her legs. She leaned forward. She grabbed her stomach. She leaned forward, closed her eyes, and her face began to contort. And before you knew it, the woman was sobbing like a baby. I mean, she was sobbing. Because God had touched a nerve. He wasn't concerned about what her lifestyle was. He wasn't concerned about what she was doing right then and there. He knew that what he needed to do was touch the part that was buried under all, all the facades. 
He needed to touch that hidden child, the hidden wounds that were buried under all the, 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 the front that she was putting on, the masquerade that she had been learning to play all her life. And God touched that woman in such a way that when I came back the following month, she was front of the line, front and center, in the front row. And I heard her tell the other guys, this is going to be good, you guys. Her attitude was gone. The front was gone. The hardness was gone. She looked like a happy little girl going to Disneyland. She was so cute. Whole attitude was a change. I mean, it was a total shift. She was soft. She was vulnerable. She was sweet. She was joyful. She was all lit up inside. And I looked at her with amazement. I said, God, only you would have known to reach out to her of all people, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have even known. Lives can be changed if you would get your attitudes and your judgmental thinking out of the way. All these little preconceived notions. You don't know these people. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know the pain that's been pushed on them when they were young. You don't know. So you should step aside. Let go and let God do what he wants to do. And quit putting so many stipulations on people. They'll get their stipulations as they get to know God. As they get to know God, they do something wrong. The Holy Spirit will say, check. I don't think so. And I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. You won't have to be Holy Ghost Junior. You won't have to be the police. You let the Holy Ghost handle them. You let them walk in your church however way they want to. And get out of the way and let God do what he wants in their lives. You hear me? God bless you. I'm done fussing. <laughs>